Ichi go Ichi. Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In this one, I hopefully it would be a bit more on the instruction side, the technique side, rather than me uh, just uh, aimlessly rambling. Um, anyway, so I uh, this is a Wonder Woman sketch for those who haven't uh, uh, were able to uh, figure out what that is. This is um, another Procreate drawing. I did the initial sort of underdrawing in uh, Procreate as well with a, uh, I think it was a pencil tool in Procreate. And then now I'm going in with my uh, trusty technical pen that I love to use for inking. I have altered it quite a bit to make it sort of bend to my will. Hopefully you guys will do that. There are tons of great instructional videos in uh, about Procreate and how to alter your brushes. And so I suggest you, you go there. Uh, I could probably do one of my own for this specific brush if you like the results. I do, so maybe I will share that at some point. So, again, into the technique. Um, again, as I mentioned before, I love to kind of use an ink line, kind of an old school comic booky or cartoony ink line. Heavy blacks, bold in certain areas, lighter in others. Uh, for me, I love the graphic quality that that creates. And as I mentioned in previous videos, I love the sort of binding shape that happens when you uh, outline something. Um, some might consider it a bit on the, how would you say, uh, coloring book <laughs> kind of uh, style of render, but I like it and a lot of other folks do, and so hopefully you guys will as well. So technique wise, as you can see here, I am sort of moving the image around. This is how you would do it if you were sketching on paper. You would kind of, um, naturally, I think the wrist and hand want to go in a certain direction in order to get a nice clean, sharp line. So if you're having difficulty sort of pulling like a nice smooth line, you're going to have to kind of experiment with which direction to pull it from, um, on the whether it be on the paper or on the screen. So as you can see, I'm kind of shifting the image around just so I can find the right angle that will allow me to create a nice smooth line. So when you do that, I think eventually if you do it enough, you'll get to a point where you're like, oh, okay, I need to sort of have the image almost upside down in order to capture the line I'm looking for. Um, there are a lot of artists um, that I admire that um, literally shift the paper completely upside down and backwards, and, and that paper literally goes in, it's almost like it's on a uh, merry-go-round. It literally loops around multiple times for them to kind of pull the right line that they want when they're inking. Um, so. I do it sometimes when I sketch as well, but mostly when I'm inking where I think it's most required to kind of pull the line in the right direction. Just I just think it's just a limitation of uh, the human wrist and hand. Although there are some artists who can kind of, you know, kind of pull a, a nice clean line from almost any direction, but I imagine it required a ton of practice for them to get there. And another great thing, I don't know if you guys have noticed that, that in Procreate, obviously you can undo. So sometimes I can place a line that I'm not kind of feeling and I can just kind of, you know, double finger tap and it is gone. And I can go right back in and uh, apply a new ink line, which I, you know, you'll see me do along the way here. You'll see a line go and then magically disappear. Another great thing in, in Procreate is the layering. So, you know, I can place these lines, obviously there, this whole entire layer of ink is on its, um, its own separate labeled layer uh, as line art. And that uh, line underneath, that sort of, sort of, I don't know, light brownish colored line that I've sort of uh, kind of ghosted back, that's on its own layer, which I think I, I titled it uh, Sketch, just to kind of differentiate. But as I go along here, you can see me there, I'm kind of selecting a different brush. Um, I have a sort of a thicker one, I think it's called Studio Brush, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I can double check that later. but. I use that sometimes for the thicker lines. It's uh, it's almost like it's a wetter, you know, a wetter ink brush or ink pen. Uh, it might be studio pen actually, but again, I'll I'll double check that down the road. Probably not in this video. Um, so again, oh, more of that idle uh, banter that <laughs> that you guys love. Um, anyway, so let me focus more on technique. So as you see, along with shifting the you know, the, um, the artwork, the, 
the entire image. I also zoom in greatly at times and I push back at times. Um, I think it's wise even, again, when you're drawing on paper to kind of step back from it and kind of get a broader sense of the overall image. Uh, that's what I'm doing there. I kind of zoom in and zoom out. Same thing can be done when you're rendering any rendering, whether it be a painting or a line art sketch like this or a pencil sketch or um, anything along the way. You can kind of, you, you, you will need to kind of step back. It doesn't have to be a room sized piece of art. It can be a little, you know, piece of art on eight and a half by 11 paper and just kind of take a step back and kind of see the overall image. I find if you don't, oftentimes you'll get characters who are a bit on the squat side or um, should I say uninten unintentionally on the squat side or, or they'll be, you know, you'll start at the top of the rendering and you get to the bottom and you realize, well, the legs are really short or, you know, the arms are really short or a certain aspect of the illustration will kind of get lost um, proportionally because you haven't kind of taken a step back to kind of see the overall image. So that being said, I will zoom in quite a bit. And another great feature in Procreate is the ability to kind of place a line down and just erase it. As you can see, that's what I did just right there, kind of erasing sections. And I didn't like how that strap sort of went over a shoulder. Later on in the sketch, I'll sort of adjust the hair so you kind of get the little roundness of a shoulder as it starts to head towards her neck. I think it gets lost a little bit there in the in the hair. I will adjust that later on. Uh, I'll try to remember to point it out when I do. So, moving on, we you know along with a lot of these multiple zooms, these multiple push ins and push back outs, I like to vary uh, the line weight. Um, it's a really simple formula to vary in the line weight, and the reason it to begin with the have line weight is to kind of give your line drawings some volume. Um, there is a technique, an approach where every single line has the same uniform line weight and then you allow the color to kind of do the work to kind of differentiate all the volume of each individual, each individual shape within the piece of art. But for me, I like to kind of indicate that with the line. And I'll be honest with you, um, it's become kind of a, a visual shorthand for me where I'll vary the line weight and oftentimes I don't have to render too much more beyond that call it laziness if you will but there is a point sometimes if I vary the line weight it gives you the sense of thickness or it gives you the sense of for lack of a better way to describe it a sense of like volume and, and um, density just by making it a bold line you can see it there with the um, the cast shadow that's under her chin where it meets the neck um, bolder line there just under her um, a sort of headpiece um, and you can see the extra sort of layer that um, th that bevel that's created by adding the thin line on top of it it's a great little tip for when you're doing ink drawings if you want to create something that's got some sort of bezel or beveled shape to it you want to um, thicker underneath to represent the shadow and thin on top to, um, to kind of give you that sort of that shape that you that sees indicated there so another great feature is you know along with the multi-layering the ability to um, erase the ability to you know change your brush and your line weights um, and lastly your ability to kind of zoom in super close as I'm doing here another great feature here I like is the be able to create a background in a color oftentimes I'll work in gray um, I just prefer it. For some reason, I find having some sort of color, oftentimes either a neutral color or a mid-tone, um, allows me to just focus on the line art and also the highlighting, which we'll get into down the road. So at some point on this, I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm gonna show you a little more of the fuller figure. This is an exaggerated character. So um, the anatomy, don't ding me too hard on the anatomy. It's meant to be uh, sort of lively and cartoony. Um, it's it's a weird bridge. This one, I think, it's probably closer to Disney, and it's um, you know Disney princess, I guess, in its uh, um, its proportion. Um, oftentimes, you know me, I like to render them really sort of 
super super squat super super cartoony or i like to go the other way sometimes where i'll offer and um render them a little more realistically where i'll find photos and i'll work from there um so i'm starting to get into the detailing here I'm starting to render the rest of her body parts um her accessories uh, particularly the sword um, not again wasn't going for super accuracy I know those who've seen the movie and love the movie and love the character would probably be like eh, that's a little off in terms of detailing on it uh, I personally didn't care for this one <laughs> sorry um, I, pay, I care about doing a nice sketch and and in this case I wasn't so focused on the specific details um, right now right now I'm zooming in on the uh, shield area um, again shield this one's kind of like a hybrid of the two shields uh, I left the uh, center piece blank and it's got some dings and nicks in it from battle damage here I'm sort of zooming in on the hair and I love to spot in hair this is a real bugaboo for a lot of artists is um, rendering hair graphically so that it is um, essentially it's, it's done in such a way that sort of imitates waves and and it imitates sort of the locks of hair. It's, uh, it's a tricky thing, but it's a technique you can get used to with a lot of practice and just kind of study how comic book artists do it. All right, so I've zoomed out and I've decided to sort of uh, basically color this piece kind of monochromatically. I chose this sort of grayish, um, warm grayish brown, and I've kind of knocked it back a bit and decided to apply some white uh, highlights on top and at this point I was almost ready to just keep it really clean and graphic um, not sure why I go the direction I do <laughs> afterwards as you can see but I threw in some texture and some highlights and I was like all right let me put the finishing touches on this bad boy call it a day so anyways this is my um, sort of inking demo hope you guys enjoy it I hope you guys um, get a kick out of these and if you do please feel free to subscribe and leave comments below. All right? So, sketchy goichi. Live your moment. Happy sketching, y'all. Peace.